This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on January 8, 2006. War is Kind by Stephen Crane Do not weep, maiden, for war is kind, Because your lover threw wild hands toward the sky And the affrighted steed ran on alone, do not weep. War is kind. Hoarse, booming drums of the regiment, Little souls who thirst for fight, These men were born to drill and die. The unexplained glory flies above them. Great is the battle-god, great, and his kingdom, A field where a thousand corpses lie. Do not weep, babe, for war is kind, because your father tumbled in the yellow trenches, raged at his breast, gulped, and died. Do not weep. War is kind. Swift blazing flag of the regiment, eagle with crest of red and gold, these men were born to drill and die. Point for them the virtue of slaughter, make plain to them the excellence of killing, and the field where a thousand corpses lie. Mother, whose head hung humble as a button on the bright splendid shroud of your son, do not weep. War is kind. What says the sea, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, kept his message for the ships, awkward ships, Stupid ships. The sea birds you mourn, O pines, sing low in the moonlight. He sends tale of the land of doom, of place where endless falls a rain of women's tears and men in gray robes, men in gray robes chant the unknown pain. What says the sea, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, Kept his message for the ships, Puny ships, silly ships. The sea-birds you teach, O pines, Sing low in the moonlight, Teach the gold of patience, Cry gospel of gentle hands, Cry a brotherhood of hearts, The sea-birds you teach, O pines. And where is the reward, little shell? What says the sea? Long has our brother been silent to us, Kept his message for the ships, Puny ships, silly ships. No word, says the sea, O pines, No word, says the sea. Long will your brother be silent to you, Keep his message for the ships, O puny ships, silly pines. To the maiden the sea was blue meadow, Alive with little froth people singing. To the sailor wrecked the sea was dead gray walls, Superlative in vacancy, Upon which, nevertheless, at faithful time was written The grim hatred of nature. A little ink, more or less, it surely can't matter. Even the sky and the opulent sea, the plains and hills aloof hear the uproar of all these books, but it is only a little ink, more or less. What? You define me God with these trinkets? Can my misery meal on an ordered walking of surplus numbskulls and a fanfare of lights, or even upon the measured pulpitings of the familiar, false, and true, is this God? Where then is hell? Show me some bastard mushrooms springing from a pollution of blood. It is better. Where is God? Have you ever made a just man? Oh, I have made three, answered God, but two of them are dead, and the third... Listen. Listen, and you will hear the thud of his defeat. 
I explain the silvered passing of a ship at night, The sweep of each sad lost wave, The dwindling boom of the steel things striving, The little cry of a man to a man, A shadow falling across the grayer night, And the sinking of the small star. Then the waste, the far waste of waters, and the soft lashing of black waves were long and in loneliness. Remember thou, O ship of love, thou leavest the fair waste of waters and the soft lashing of black waves for long and in loneliness. I have heard the sunset song of the birches, a white melody in the silence. I have seen the quarrel of the pines at nightfall. The little grasses have rushed by me with the windmen. These things I have lived, quoth the maniac, possessing only eyes and ears. But you, you don green spectacles before you look at roses. Fast rode the knight with spurs hot and reeking, ever waving an eager sword. To save my lady, fast rode the knight, and leaped from saddle to war. Men of steel flickered and gleamed like riot of silver lights, and the gold of the knight's good banner still waved on a castle wall. A horse, blowing, staggering, bloody thing, forgotten at foot of castle wall, a horse, dead at foot of castle wall. Forth went the candid man, and spoke freely to the wind. When he looked about him, he was in a far strange country. Forth went the candid man, and spoke freely to the stars. Yellow light tore sight from his eyes. My good fool, said a learned bystander, your operations are mad. You are too candid, cried the candid man, and when his stick left the head of the learned bystander, it was two sticks. You tell me this is God? I tell you this is a printed list, a burning candle, and an ass. On the desert, a silence from the moon's deepest valley, fire rays fall athwart the robes of hooded men squat and dumb. Before them, a woman moves to the blowing of shrill whistles and distant thunder of drums, while mystic things, sinuous, dull with terrible color, sleepily fondle her body, or move at her will, swishing stealthily over the sand. The snakes whisper softly, the whispering, whispering snakes, dreaming and swaying and staring, but always whispering, softly whispering. The wind streams from the lone reaches of Arabia, solemn with night, and the wild fire makes shimmer of blood over the robes of the hooded men, squat and dumb. Bands of moving bronze, emerald, yellow, circled the throat and arms of her, and over the sands serpents move warily, slow, menacing and submissive, swinging to the whistles and drums, the whispering, whispering snakes, dreaming and swaying and staring, but always whispering, softly whispering the dignity of the accursed. The glory of slavery, despair, death, is in the dance of the whispering snakes. A newspaper is a collection of half-injustices which, bawled by boys from mile to mile, spreads its curious opinion to a million merciful and sneering men, while families cuddle the joys of the fireside when spurned by tale of dire, lonely agony. A newspaper is a court where every one is kindly and unfairly tried by a squalor of honest men. A newspaper is a market where wisdom sells its freedom, and melons are crowned by the crowd. A newspaper is a game where his error scores the player victory, while another's skill wins death. A newspaper is a symbol. It is Fetless Life's Chronicle, 
a collection of loud tales concentrating eternal stupidities that, in remote ages, lived unhaltered, roaming through a fenceless world. The wayfarer, perceiving the pathway to truth, was struck with astonishment. It was thickly grown with weeds. Ha! he said. I see that none has passed here in a long time. Later he saw that each weed was a singular knife. Well, he mumbled at last, doubtless, there are other roads. A slant of sun on dull brown walls, a forgotten sky of bashful blue, toward God a mighty hymn, a song of collisions and cries, rumbling wheels, hoofbeats, bells, welcomes, farewells, love calls, final moans, voices of joy, idiocy, warning, despair, the unknown appeals of brutes, the chanting of flowers, the screams of cut trees, the senseless babble of hens and wise men, a cluttered incoherency that says at the stars, O oh God, save us. Once a man clambering to the housetops appealed to the heavens with a strong voice. He called to the deaf spheres. A warrior's shout he raised to the suns. Lo, at last, there was a dot on the clouds, and at last, and at last, God, the sky was filled with armies. There was a man with tongue of wood who essayed it to sing, and in truth it was lamentable. But there was one who heard the clip-clapper of this tongue of wood, and knew what the man wished to sing. And with that the singer was content. The successful man has thrust himself through the water of years, reeking wet with mistakes, bloody mistakes, slimed with victories over the lesser, a figure thankful of the shore of money. Then with the bones of fools he buys silken banners, limbed with his triumphant face. With the skins of wise men he buys the trivial bows of all. Flesh painted with marrow contributes a coverlet, a coverlet for his contented slumber. In guiltless ignorance, in ignorant guilt, he delivers his secrets to the riven multitude. Thus I defended, thus I wrought. Complacent, smiling, he stands heavily on the dead, direct on a pillar of skulls he declaims his trampling of babes, smirking, fat, dripping. He makes speech in guiltless ignorance, innocence. In the night gray heavy clouds muffled the valleys, and the peaks looked toward God alone. O master that movest the wind with a finger, Humble, idle, futile peaks are we. Grant that we may run swiftly across the world to huddle in worship at thy feet. In the morning a noise of men at work came in the clear blue miles, and the little black cities were apparent. O oh, master that knowest the meaning of raindrops, humble, idle, futile peaks are we. Give us voice, we pray, O Lord, that we may sing thy goodness to the sun. In the evening the far valleys were sprinkled with tiny lights. O Master, thou that knowest the value of kings and birds, thou hast made us humble, idle, futile peaks. Thou only needest eternal patience. We bow to thy wisdom, O Lord, humble, idle, futile peaks. In the night gray, heavy clouds muffle the valleys, and the peaks look toward God alone. The chatter of a death demon from a treetop. Blood, blood and torn grass had marked the rise of his agony, this lone hunter. The gray-green woods impassive had watched the threshing of his limbs. A canoe with flashing paddle, a girl with soft, searching eyes, a call. John! Come, arise, hunter. Can you not hear the chatter of a death demon from a treetop? 
The impact of a dollar upon the heart smiles warm red light. Sweeping from the earth rosily upon the white table with the hanging cool velvet shadows moving softly upon the floor. The impact of a million dollars is a crash of flunkies and yawning emblems of Persia checked against oak, France, and a saber, the outcry of old beauty, whored by pimping merchants to submission before wine and chatter. Silly, rich peasants stamp the carpets of men, dead men, who dreamed fragrance and light into their woof, their lives, the rug of an honest bear under the feet of a cryptic slave who speaks always of baubles, forgetting state, multitude, work, and state, champing and mouthing of hats, making ratful squeaks of hats. Hats. A man said to the universe, Sir, I exist. However, replied the universe, the fact has not created in me a sense of obligation. When the prophet, a complacent fat man, arrived at the mountain top, he cried, Woe to my knowledge! I intended to see good white lands and bad black lands, but the scene is gray. There was a land where lived no violets. A traveler at once demanded, Why? And people told him once, The violets of this place spoke thus. Until some woman freely give her lover to another woman, we will fight in bloody scuffle. Sadly, the people added, there are no violets here. There was one I met upon the road who looked at me with kind eyes. He said, show me your wares. And I did. Holding forth one, he said, it is a sin. Then I held forth another. He said, it is a sin. Then I held forth another, he said, It is a sin. And so to the end. Always, he said, It is a sin. At last I cried out, But I have none other. He looked at me with kinder eyes. Poor soul, he said. I, workman, make me a dream, a dream for my love. Cunningly weave sunlight, breezes and flowers, let it be of the cloth of meadows, and good workmen, and let there be a man walking thereon. Each small gleam was a voice, a lantern voice, in little songs of carmine, violet, green, gold. A chorus of colors came over the water. The wondrous leaf shadow no longer wavered, no pines crooned on the hills. The blue night was elsewhere a silence. When the chorus of colors came over the water, little songs of carmine, violet, green, gold. Small glowing pebbles thrown on the dark plain of evening sing good ballads of God and eternity with soul's rest. Little priests, little holy fathers, none can doubt the truth of our hymning. When the marvelous chorus comes over the water, Songs of Carmen, violet, green, gold. The trees in the garden rained flowers. Children ran there joyously. They gathered the flowers, each to himself. Now there were some who gathered great heaps, Having opportunity and skill, Until, behold, only chance blossoms remained for the feeble. Then a little spindling tutor ran importantly to the father, crying, Pray, come hither, see this unjust thing in your garden. But when the father had surveyed, he admonished the tutor, Not so, small sage, this thing is just. For, look you, are not they who possess the flowers stronger, bolder, shrewder than they who have none? Why should the strong the beautiful strong, why should they not have the flowers? Upon reflection the tutor bowed to the ground. My lord, he said, the stars are displaced by this towering wisdom. Intrigue 
thou art my love. Thou art the peace of sundown when the blue shadows soothe and the grasses and the leaves sleep to the song of the little brooks. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a storm that breaks black in the sky, and sweeping headlong drenches and cowers each tree, and at the panting end there is no sound save the melancholy cry of a single owl. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a tinsel thing, and I in my play broke thee easily. And from the little fragments arose my long sorrow. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a wary violet, Drooping from sun caresses, answering mine carelessly. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art the ashes of other men's love, And I bury my face in these ashes, and I love them. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art the beard on another man's face. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a temple, and in this temple is an altar, and on this altar is my heart. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a wretch. Let these sacred love lies choke thee. For I am come to where I know your lies as truth, And your truth as lies. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a priestess, And in thy hand is a bloody dagger, And my doom comes to me surely. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art a skull with ruby eyes, and I love thee. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and I doubt thee. And if peace came with thy murder, Then would I murder. Woe is me. Thou art my love, and thou art death. Ay, thou art death, black and yet black, But I love thee. I love thee. Woe, welcome woe to me. Love, forgive me if I wish you grief, For in your grief you huddle to my breast, And for it would I pay the price of your grief. You walk among men, and all men do not surrender, And thus I understand that love reaches his hand in mercy to me. He had your picture in his room, a scurvy traitor picture, and he smiled, merely a fat complacence of men who know fine women, and thus I divided with him a part of my love. Fool not to know that thy little shoe can make men weep, some men weep, I weep and I gnash, and I love the little shoe, the little, little shoe. God, give me medals, God, give me loud honors, That I may strut before you, sweetheart, And be worthy of the love I bear you. Now let me crunch you with the full weight of a frighted love. I doubted you, I doubted you, And in this short doubting my love grew like a genie For my further undoing. Beware of my friends, be not in speech too civil, for in all courtesy my weak heart sees spectres, mists of desire arising from the lips of my chosen. Be not civil. The flower I gave thee once was incident to a stride, a detail of a gesture. But search those pale petals and see engraven thereon a record of my intention. Ah, God, the way your little finger moved, And you thrust a bare arm backward And made play with your hair and a comb, A silly gilt comb, ah, God, That I should suffer because of the way A little finger moved. 
Once I saw thee idly rocking, idly rocking, and chattering girlishly to other girls, bell-voiced, happy, careless, with the stout heart of unscarred womanhood, and life to thee was all light melody. I thought of the great storms of love as I knew it, torn, miserable, and ashamed of my open sorrow. I thought of the thunders that lived in my head, and I wished to be an ogre, and hail and haul my beloved to a castle, and make her mourn with my mourning. Tell me why behind thee I see always the shadow of another lover. Is it real, or is the thrice-damned memory of a better happiness? Plague on him if he be dead, plague on him if he be alive, a swinish numbskull to intrude his shade always between me and my peace. And yet I have seen thee happy with me. I am no fool to pull stupidly into the iron. I have heard your quick breaths and seen your arms writhe toward me at those times. God help us! I was impelled to be a grand knight, and swagger, and snap my fingers, and explain my mind finally. O oh, lost sweetheart, I would that I had not been a grand knight. I said, Sweetheart, thou said, Sweetheart, and we preserved an admirable mimicry without heeding the drip of blood from my heart. I heard thee laugh, and in this merriment I defined the measure of my pain. I knew that I was alone, alone with love, poor shivering love, and he, little sprite, came to watch with me, and at midnight we were like two creatures by a dead campfire. I wonder if sometimes in the dusk, when the brave lights that gild thy evenings have not yet been touched with flame, I wonder if sometimes in the dusk thou rememberest a time, a time when thou loved me, and our love was to thee thy all. Is the memory rubbish now? An old gown worn in an age of other fashions? Woe is me, O oh, lost one, for... That love is now to me a supernal dream, white, white, white with many suns. Love met me at noonday, reckless imp, to leave his shaded nights and brave the glare, and I saw him then plainly for a bungler, a stupid, simpering, eyeless bungler, breaking the hearts of brave people as the sniveling idiot boy cracks his bowl, and I cursed him, cursed him to and fro, back and forth, into all the silly mazes of his mind, but in the end he laughed and pointed to my breast, where a heart still beat for thee, beloved. I have seen thy face aflame for love of me. Thy fair arms go mad, thy lips tremble and mutter and rave, and surely this should leave a man content. Thou lovest not me now, but thou didst love me, and in loving me once thou gave me an eternal privilege, for I can think of thee. End of War is Kind by Stephen Crane